So here I'd like to look at the very basics of writing an equation for a parabola using the transform method. So this is by hand. And by basics I mean no scale factors. So the parabolas are very standard. What I mean by that is that this little invisible number that you guys won't see here, k, is equal to 1. Now that becomes more complex in the next video if you're looking to do the excellence level parabolas for level 2. But Again, it's just the basics so we can get familiar with how these transforms actually work and what they mean. We'll forget about the k and just call it 1. So, the very first thing that you've got to do when you're trying to write these equations by hand is determine whether or not you're dealing with the x-intercepts or with the vertex that you know. And it's important because if you know the x-intercepts, you can use the x-intercept method, this one here. And if you know the vertex, you can use this one here. And the vertex, if you remember, is just the min slash max of your parabola. So, these equations will tell us how these intercepts have shifted to the left or right, or how the vertex has shifted left, right, or up, or down. And that gives us an idea of how the parabola has actually been moved around the graph. Now, for the intercepts, you actually have to be able to see them. So, for instance, on this purple graph, I can see that x-intercept, and I can see the next one. So I could use the x-intercept method. For the vertex method, you need to make sure you can read the vertex carefully. So on that same purple graph, you'll notice that vertex is not directly on the grid, so I can't use it to read. But maybe this blue one here, you'll notice the vertex is directly on the grid, so I could use the vertex method there. So it's important to look for what you know and decide whether to use the in intercepts or whether to use the vertex. And that's the first step to actually pick the correct transform. And once you do, you're just going to plug in for a and b, where a in this case is x-intercept 1, and b is going to be x-intercept 2, because you'll always either have two intercept, x-intercepts or no x-intercepts. And here, if you decide to use the vertex, you look for the point that the vertex is at, and you can label it point a, b, where the a is telling you about how far left or right it's gone, so this is the left slash right shift. And this one here is the up slash down shift. So on this one, it's going to be a positive if it's shifted to the left and a negative if it's shifted to the right. And it will be a positive if it's shifted up and a negative if it's shifted down. And here, watching for our signs as well, if the x-intercept is a negative number, you'll have a positive in brackets. And if the x int is a positive, you'll have a negative in the brackets. So it's kind of like an opposites thing, but the reason that comes out is because you see the negative here. The negative makes it the opposite. If it was a positive number, you'll write it out with a negative in front. If it was a negative number, a negative and a negative will become a positive. So let's see how these work out. Um, so the first step always is going to be to pick the correct transform, x-intercept or vertex. The next thing is going to find your a and b values and plug them into the equation, basically just reading off the graph. And the last thing to check is if it's upside down, making a frown, uh, put a negative in front of the equation as well. So. Let us take a look at some of these. Um, let's start with the purple one. So, like we noticed before, this purple one, I can read the x-intercept perfectly. The vertex is not on a grid cross line there, so I can't read it exactly, and that x-intercept is also perfect to read. So, here I have a negative 8 and a negative 3 for my x-intercepts. So, I can put in a y is equal to x minus a minus 8 and x minus a minus 3 because it's always going to be x minus the intercept and x minus the intercept. So the negative and the negative cancel. You get x plus 8 and x plus 3. And last thing to notice here, this is actually a frowny face. It is an unhappy parabola. So we need that negative in front. It's a negative parabola. Taking a look at the next one, number 2, 
Again, first step, decide which method we want to use, the intercept or the vertex, and here you'll notice the intercepts are not directly on the grid line, so I'm not going to use those. I'll go with the vertex method instead. And that vertex is at a point of negative 5 in the x-direction and negative 3 in the y-direction. So it's to the left 5 and down 3. So in my transform, I can write out x minus the minus 5, that it's called left or right, squared, and here it's plus the negative 3, plus the b there, because whatever point you decide, whatever point the vertex is at, is basically a bracket b as well. So replacing the a with minus 5 and the b with minus 3, and simplifying our negative signs here, x plus 5 squared minus 3 equals y, and that one is right side up, so no negative needed in front. And again, the shortcut that you can start working towards is noticing that that went to the left 5, so I'm going to say positive 5, like I've said here, left is positive, and it's gone down 3, so I can just jump straight to the negative 3 there. But you can work to that as you get more comfortable with these basics. So again, to write them out, y is equal to x minus a, x minus b, so we can see them x minus a squared plus b. Let's go with the next parabola here, number 3. Looking through this one, conveniently you can see the x-intercepts, and you can also see the vertex. So here we'll actually write it out in both forms. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but I'll write it out with both so you can see how different equations could look for the same graph. But they mean the same thing, they would represent the exact same graph. So let's go with our intercept method first. That's a negative 1, and that is to the left 1, so that becomes x plus 1. And the other one is a positive 3, so that's to the right 3, x minus 3. And again, that's because the double negative with the negative 1 becomes a positive, and the minus with the positive becomes a negative there. Or we can write it out using the other transform method with the vertex, which we can see here is at the point 1, comma, negative 4. So I can see that's gone to the right 1, so minus 1, squared, and it's gone down 4, so I can just say minus 4. And one thing that I did want to point out, and this is a good example for it, in the vertex method, the brackets need to be squared. And in the intercept method, the brackets are not squared, so pay attention to that. Again, the brackets are not squared with the intercept method, but they are squared with the transform for the vertex. Okay, looking at the next one, we'll go with this orange graph here, number 4. Um, what can we see here? We've got an x-intercept. That vertex I can't really read exactly, and we've got another x-intercept, so that seems to be the best way to go about that. So y is equal to x-intercept, x minus 0, and x minus 5, going to the right of 0 by 5 there. And you can leave it like that, it would just be fine, or you can simplify x minus 0, that's really just x, and then bracket x minus 5. That's usually how you'll see it written without the minus 0. And looking at our last one, equation number 5, taking a look at what we've got, mm, the intercept I could guess is about negative 0.5, but I don't know that precisely, so let's look at the vertex, which I can read very precisely. That's at 1, 2, over 1, up 2. So y is equal to, it's gone over 1, so it's gone to the right 1, so that's a minus 1 squared, and it's gone up by 2, plus 2. So we can stop there, that will work for that equation. Except, is that a happy parabola or an unhappy parabola? You'll notice that one is a negative, it is an upside down parabola, so we need to make sure we put, oops, we need to make sure we put a negative in front of that write it a bit neater, y is equal to negative x minus 1 bracket squared plus 2. So again, pick your correct transform based on the information given to you in the graph, 
plug in for the values of A or B, depending on whether the intercepts or the point where the vertex is. And just watch out for a positive or a negative parabola if you need to put the negative in front of your equation.